Robin Murdoch live outside the Clinton Township Police Department where investigators are looking into a shooting at the Harbors Apartments and they believe it is now connected to a robbery. What we have been able to find out in my live report. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Robin. Growing concerns this morning after another postal worker is the target of crime. There have been other, several other incidents this year where a mail carrier was the victim of an armed robbery. The latest on this one is coming up. Good morning, Brandon. Well, Amy, good morning. And also, the fight over outdoor dining in Northville just got uglier. Residents have been fighting with the city to open the streets that were closed in downtown during the pandemic. And now it appears that the issue is going to head to court. We're going to have the latest just ahead. Working for you. Fox 2 News Live at 11 starts now. Who knew that could be so contentious? I know, right. First we had Plymouth. outdoor dining in Plymouth, and now we have now Northville. Northville. Yeah. Both great communities. They are. I, I, you know, I love dining. People love visiting them I too. Know. All right. So good morning. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Amy Lang, and I'm Brandon Hudson, and we begin in Detroit, where a Detroit couple is charged with the death of a woman's seven-year-old child. It is absolutely tragic. We're just learning about this one. The details are disturbing. Investigators say Renee Holloman and her significant other, Avion Trailer, abused, tortured, and murdered Holloman's son. This was discovered on Monday when police went to Holloman's home on Hurlbut Street. Officers say when they arrived, they found the boy suffering from scars and cuts across his face, back, and chest. Responders took him to the hospital where he he was later pronounced dead. The official cause of death for Deshaun Williams was multiple blunt force trauma to the head and pelvis. The couple is expected to be arraigned today. It has been a troubling 36 hours for residents in Clinton Township at an apartment complex out there on Monday night. The area was locked down as police searched for kidnappers, and then late last night, officers returned for an unrelated shooting. We're learning more about what led up to those shots being fired at the Harbors Apartments. Investigators say it is connected to a robbery. Fox 2's Robin Murdoch live with the latest on this investigation. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Amy and Brandon. Yeah, police are releasing limited information at this point because they say they're still trying to sort out all the details. We do know that one suspect is in custody following a robbery as well as a shooting and that they are still trying to track down another person connected to this. Meanwhile, neighbors tell me that they are concerned and ready to move. I heard about eight to ten gunshots ring off. That was all it took to send this man who lives in the Harbor Apartments here in Clinton Township ducking for cover along with his fiance and baby. When the gunfire stopped, he noticed this car with a shattered windshield not far from his home. It was super loud. It was I mean, it sounded like it was right here. Police started getting calls about the shooting at the complex on Bayview close to Hall Road just before 11 o'clock on Tuesday night. We're told it's connected to a robbery inside one of the apartments. One suspect is now in custody. Another likely hurt, but police have not been able to find them. I moved in. It was pretty quiet here, uh, but it's, it's really, there's really been a lot of stuff going on. Helicopters were over looking for people last night. This is the same area pretty much put on lockdown on Monday night while investigators search for the culprits behind a carjacking and abduction that eventually led to a police chase and crash. Another resident told me off camera his car and two others were stolen here just on Sunday. Hope they figure it out. We can't have this going on. Uh, residential area. There's thousands of people in these apartments. But police continue to look into the overnight robbery and the shooting that stemmed from it. Those who heard and saw the commotion just want the violence to stop. Their family's safety paramount and worth packing up over. Stray bullets. It happens all the time. My daughter's nine months old and she's laying right there. So it's it's not good. We're, we're probably going to be getting out of here pretty soon now. 
Yeah, that gentleman obviously fed up over the crime that has been happening so close to his home. Now, police do tell us that they do not think this was random, but they right, right now they are holding back on sharing a lot of information about the suspect that they currently have in custody, as well as that second person that they are still trying to locate. But of course, that could change throughout the day as their investigation and what they are dealing with becomes more clear. Of course, if you know anything that could help police, though, with this case, you're asked to give them a call right away. For now, we are live outside the Clinton Township Police Department. I'm Robin Murdoch for Fox 2 News. And Robin, even if it is not random, that's little consolation for that father who's concerned about his baby and I'm sure a whole lot of other people who are very concerned about their safety right now. Yeah, and I did reach out to the apartment complex, the Harbors apartment, obviously, to see if anything is changing there as a result of this uptick in crime that people have been describing to me. Uh, we are still waiting to hear some sort of a re response, but uh, but that is something that these people who live nearby want to see. They want to see increased security in light of all of this. Back to you. Can't blame them. All right. Thanks so much. As always, Robin Murdoch, we appreciate you. Ben. Heavy hearts in St. Clair Shores this morning after a driver hits and kills a child in a park. First responders raced to the scene yesterday afternoon at the Blossom Heath Park on Jefferson Avenue, just south of 10 miles. Sadly, the seven year old did not survive. What we're working to learn is what led the driver to hit the child. Police did say that the driver stopped and is cooperating with the investigation. It is not clear if charges will be filed. And a Detroit mother suing the city's public school district after she says a security guard beat and choked her son. Pretty disturbing stuff here. The entire confrontation at Northwestern High School was caught on video. The student's family seeking $14 million. They claim words were exchanged before things escalated into a full-scale brawl. It honestly brought tears to my eyes. I had to hold it back because you could hear my son gasping for air, you know? And no mother wants to experience that. And every day that he goes to that school where I don't hear, I don't hear feedback from him, I'm going to think about that. Now, the teenager was treated for several minor injuries. The security guard was arrested, banned from the school, and placed on administrative leave pending the legal outcome. And postal workers targeted again after several incidents this year. Another mail carrier is the victim of an armed robbery in Metro Detroit. So this latest incident happened in a quiet area of Northville. Fox 2's Scott Wolchek takes a close look at why police believe the criminals are going after postal workers who are just doing their job. This is a very quiet community. Until today, when a gun was held to a postal carrier's stomach in broad daylight, according to Northville Township Police. They say two men in ski masks ambushed the mail carrier around 1245 in the afternoon here at 8 Mile and Silver Spring Drive. I keep my door open, but now I'm going to start locking it up. Rose Sapla, nervous after the alleged robbery. She's lived near here for more than 40 years. I'm 83 years old, by the way, but I've never heard such thing like that in here in Northville. Police say the robbers were looking for a set of postal master keys that opened multiple types of mailboxes, allowing them to access mail in any community. The opportunities for crime expands from there, whether it's check fraud or identity theft, things of that nature. Deputy Chief Matthew McKenzie with Northville Township Police says shortly after the robbery, Livonia police were able to track the vehicle down. The suspects are now in custody and inside the car. Handgun and a rifle found within the vehicle out in, in plain sight. And sadly, robbing postal carriers is starting to become a trend, according to police. Here in Taylor, we report on multiple incidents where people were holding up postal carriers and taking their master keys. And in this community, we've even had it where they've come back and started going through people's mail. One of our uh, neighbors uh, came home at about midnight and noticed that somebody was in the mail kiosk and had the main door open. Ever since, Doug Guy says out of safety, he and his neighbors have had to go to the post office just to get their mail. That's 45 more people that are going to the post office. That's 45 more people that are in front of you in line. So it adds to, you know, cost, time, and efficiency. Geis knows police will catch these brazen bad guys and is just glad nobody 
has been hurt so far. I pray for the uh, for the postal carrier. I hope that they are all right. Even if they weren't harmed, it certainly is traumatic. That was Fox 2 Scott Wolchek reporting. Scott says that the suspects are in custody. They are awaiting their arraignment. Authorities would not speculate if these are related to other incidents in Taylor. Well, also from Northville this morning, it appears the battle over those street closures in the city's downtown area, well, it's now heading to the Wayne County Circuit Court. Residents filed a complaint against the city of Northville to permanently reopen the closed blocks of East Main and North Center. During the pandemic, the city closed those streets to allow restaurants to provide outdoor dining. But people who live near downtown say the closures have created chaos, and they say the city's compromise plan to open the streets to traffic from November to May is just unacceptable. So far, there's been no response from the city, but stay tuned. The UAW strike is now in day 41, and it is escalating again. This time, the union is taking aim at General Motors, telling 5,000 workers at the company's largest assembly plant in Arlington, Texas, to hit the picket line. Factory makes some of GM's most profitable ve profitable vehicles, like Chevy Suburban, the GMC Tahoe, and Cadillac Escalade. The strike was announced just hours after GM revealed it's earned three billion dollars in the third quarter. My message is: time to pay up. We haven't had a raise in 14 years. We've had six percent raise in 14 years. Time to pay up. You're making multi billions of dollars in profit. <laughs> Be greedy. And as you may expect, GM says that the UAW strike is harming its team members and having negative ripple effects on dealers, suppliers, and communities.